Greetings everyone, I am RSV. Though so you may be aware of the challenge modes, but were you aware that you can get over 500 SG a week by doing them? That's right, 500 SG. Though the average player will likely only get 200 or 100. The reason for this is the challenge mode can be done on all five ships. Most players will only do CM3 however and do it on your ship and on the universal ship. And usually we choose the rush classes, so Hunter, Bouncer and Ranger when we do this. The reason why we do this is to guarantee that the easiest boss will spawn, that boss being Luther, but also because hunters can infinitely heal the group under the right circumstance. You bring a single bouncer along for jet boots for the build up photon art that boots have, as it is really useful in the second floor. And you bring a single ranger along for blight rounds and its utility. So regardless of how good your ranger is, they are ultimately a potato that needs to be protected, as they will be the weakest link in your group. The goal is to get the maximum point in the challenge mode. This means you cannot die unless you have the challenge doll. But let's move on to the actual floor. Floor 1. The first pull is the Yeti pull. Now, I do not recommend throwing the gravity bomb straight in the middle here. Instead, throw a stun bomb and then use the gravity bomb to separate the Yeti. The reason for this is the Yeti can one-shot you as a ranger and can be very dangerous to the hunters and bouncers. So, be careful of this. Between pool 1 and 2, there's an intermission of spike pillars. Be careful as they can cause you to die. If you are in the wrong place at the time, they will all hit you and you will die. Pool 2 is the fish people and the bomb. I don't have much to say this except for stay away from the bombs. Pool 3, the horsemen. One hunter here needs to grab the two red horsemen in the middle and everyone else should be killing the golden boys on either side. I as a ranger prefer to attack the red boys along with the hunter purely because I feel that it is more worth my time and safer being a ranged class versus a melee class but you may find otherwise as a ranger and attacking the red boys as a ranger in this scenario is very dangerous. Pool 4 is the toy boss. This is a fairly easy challenge of dodging by weaving in and out. You cannot do damage if you're too far away, so get up close and break his weak point. Pull 6 is simply run to the wall. Once you're on top of the wall, none of the enemies can hit you in. There is a button in that general area to deactivate the lasers, though it is not 100% necessary. Behind the wall is an ogre that throws barrel bombs. Do not kill this ogre. This ogre is not required to progress, and is the first stage where hunters become infinite healing well. Hunters can stand in the way of the barrel, but instead of allowing themselves to get hit, they can parry it with their weapon's weapon action, and this will restore health to the entire party in the vicinity. Hunters should stay back to heal everyone up, so after everyone's healed up, go and head towards the pool 6, which is the dung beetles. Be very careful about the enemies in the back as if they get you in their barrage they can just straight up kill you. If you get damaged simply run back to the barrels with a hunter or as a hunter and heal yourself up. Not use your mono mates here. And next is the final pull of this floor, the spider. One strategy you can employ is simply bringing a spider back to the wall as it will not be able to hit and you'll have free healing right behind you should you need it. Though mostly my group has just killed it where it stands and use mono mates to fight through it. Though either option is there. Make sure to jump over hits projectiles when it is putting its wall up and hiding. Now at the end of floor 1 you'll be getting your secondary weapons. Before engaging in pool 1 make sure you call out your weapons and let people know what weapons you've got. This is only really necessary for people that aren't in a leadership role in your party though as if you get a bow from here the run will proceed very smoothly. The ranger needs to kill the red tyrants on their own before the fight starts however so the ranger has a job here. Pull 1. Simply get under the ships and make sure you split so the ships isn't bombarding the entire party. Pull 2. The best way I've seen this handled is the ranger will throw a gravity bomb grouping everything up. If you have a bow or the jet boots you need to use a BPA here to kill as many of the exploity boys as possible at once and then mop up the rest of the enemies. Further, do not kill the very last red turret here as you can use that as a healing machine. The next pull is a boss enemy. Now it is ideal to have a bow for this segment as you can use the bow to kill both adds and deal damage to the boss at the same time with its build up PA. Just make sure to use the AoE variant. If the adds survive or you only have the jet boots you can choose to save a build up PA here and instead save it later. Just make sure to mop up the adds before the boss and if the boss uses a sweeping attack and you do not have confidence in the dodge just simply run on the boss. After the boss dies do not run into the next room until everyone is ready. The reason for this is although you do not start the first pull immediately you do make the buyers spawn immediately. 
reducing the amount of time that you have. To Once everyone is ready, proceed through the floor and quickly dispatch the shielding enemy in the first room. You can use a build up photon art here to quickly erase it before it reduces all damage in the general area to one, though you can recover if it does do this. Pull 5 is a dodging gauntlet. Simply get to the end where there's a safe spot and kill all the enemies with your range pack. Do not get too close to the spinning enemy as you will die. Pull 6, kill the buyers, though one person should sit on the turret and one person should get the ship. Everyone else should jump on the buyers and kill it. The person on the turret should shoot the two sword enemies to make sure that they're not aggroing anyone else and disrupting their ability to kill buyers. After the buyers is dealt with, simply mop up these enemies. The next pull, you're dealing with the handy boy, the final boss of this floor. Everyone except for one of the hunters needs to run into the room where the Rappy spawns, while the person who is handling their hand lures it into the enclave so it gets stuck. Everyone else should kill the Rappy. Once the boss is stuck, hunters need to rotate their war cry so the boss doesn't get any funny ideas. Once the boss is dead, simply run to the next area and complete the mission. In the intermission area, it's important that everyone stocks up on the AoE heal star atomizers. That way everyone can get a full heal every time one is needed. Otherwise, everyone except for one person needs to change their secondary weapon into a launcher. The reason for this is, the launcher keeps you safe and does decent AoE damage. However, the ranger will now have an edge against everyone else because the ranger has launcher as their primary weapon, so hunters need to be extra diligent that their ranger isn't getting deleted. Floor 3 is pretty straightforward. Pool 1, two people need to hop on the turret. Otherwise, everyone needs to stay back and DPS the end down. If you get too close, you'll get pulled in and a lot of damage will be dealt you. After pool 1 is cleaned up, proceeding to pool 2, there will be a Rappy spawn, and it is imperative to kill said Rappy. One of the people on the turret can kill the Rappy, preferably the one that is closest to it. The Rappy is a bit further along the pathway, so you can also send someone ahead to go and kill it. But the general strategy here is to pull the enemies back to the turret so they can be dealt with and cleaned up quickly. You'll progress along the path and there will be a jump pad. Whatever you do after clicking on the jump pad, do not move forward. Make sure you move back in the direction that where you came. The reason for this is, if you move forward before deactivating spikes, the enemies will spawn and you'll have to deal with them and the spikes. Deal with the spikes first by simply attacking the buttons. When you're ready to do the next pull though, they will have a staggered spawn. Three robots will spawn first. The ranger can throw a grab grenade to group them all up here, and then the person with the bow can delete them all with her BPA. In the next step, the ranger needs to blight round the crab that spawns, and then someone needs to shoot it with a launcher BPA. After this section is cleared, everyone will move back to where the jump pad was. However, one person will move forward to make the next boss spawn, and then they will bring it back. What will happen is the boss will get stuck on the pillar, allowing the party to kill it. Though keep in mind, hunters do need to rotate their taunt to keep it steady. Technically, the bouncer and ranger can go behind it to do some extra damage here. Though if the hunters are not keeping an eye on their threat, they will get aggro and they could displace it. In the event that the boss is displaced, you can simply move around the pillar again and get it stuck on the other side if you need to. Floor 4. Floor 4 is a bit of a gauntlet, so before starting the gauntlet, you need to wait in the waiting area and announce a BPA order. Do this primarily by getting everyone to state how much BP they have, and assign this role to people that have the most BP. Though I recommend pool 3 always being done by the ranger, as the ranger has to blight it first anyway. There'll be up to 6 BPA here, and depending on how good your group is going with time, because this area is timed, you may need to employ more. Pool 1. Use the launcher BPA on the boss. Pull 2. Gravity bomb the crabs so they're easy to DPS down. The ranger then needs to blight round the core with one blight round only and then someone else needs to use their launcher build up PA on that weak point. Pull 3. As I said before, the ranger should have the go here. So the ranger needs to blight the statue's core and then immediately use build up PA on it. This is why you only use one blight round in the turtle as you need to save it for this as well. If it is not dead after a full BPA, simply kill it by attacking its weak spot. Pull 4, start with the AoE bow build up PA to kill all the little mammoths. Depending on time, you may need to follow it up with a launcher BPA to make sure that you meet the time limit. Pull 5 is another case of using the build up PA if you need to. There is one more pull after this one, though if you're not experienced at running this, I do recommend using a build up PA here regardless of what you think. It will be of course a launcher BPA. Pull 6 is pretty simple, just use fast attacks to kill the dog. 
After this floor, there'll be another intermission. Now, it is important to restock here. And if the ranger does not have a challenge doll at this point, I do recommend giving a challenge doll to the ranger from someone who either hasn't died yet or that is confident they will not die. But the final fight at this point is fairly simple. The ranger simply has to blight round it and then everyone spam single target BPA at Lufa. And once everyone's BPA has been used, Lufa should be dead. Though if it is not dead, then simply do your best to survive while you finish it off. Keep in mind that after this happens, the ranger will most likely have aggro so hunters may want to be taunting away from the ranger as you do not want your ranger getting mashed. Your ranger is only useful to you as a whole potato, not mashed potato. Here are some final notes. You should be able to beat CM3 in a similar matter using a different composition, though it will be more difficult, and you can employ similar tactics. I do not recommend trying to attempt this as a solo run though, if you are going for the SG. And another thing, I recommend having at least two people that know what they're doing, or are leading the group. The secondary person doesn't have to be outspoken, they just need to be more independent. If they're more independent, they can do things like use build up PA if they feel it's necessary, or they can make calls for reasons that you may have missed. But I've been RSV, hope my guide was helpful to you, and I'll see you next time.